Good morning, everyone, and uh, welcome to the ECOFACT webinar, year one update. Uh, I'm Iris Gianni from RENA Consulting, who is uh, one of the, of the partners who actively participates in the, in the project ECOFACT. And here with me today, there are uh, Francisco Morentin from CARTIF, the project coordinator, uh, Dimitris Kurkumpas from CERT, uh, Mark Power from the Irish Manufacturing Research, and Federica Rosasco from RENA Consulting as well. Uh, during uh, today's event, we will update you on the main developments and results obtained within the project uh, during this first year. Uh, we will start from a general description of the project and then focus on uh, the characteristics of the demo sites involved uh, on which our results will be tested, a general overview of the results and a focus on the conclusions we reached uh, through the regulatory uh, framework analysis. Uh, we will move on to a final presentation on uh, future activities and we will conclude with a, a section of polls to which uh, we will ask you to respond, to interact with you and uh, uh, collect your point of view. So thank you all for joining us today. Uh, we really hope this will be interesting and stimulate future interaction with, uh, with you. Uh, I would like now to leave the floor to um, to the first presentation uh, from uh, Francisco uh, Morentin from Cartif, again, the coordinator of the, of the project. Uh, Francisco, if you would like to share your screen. Yes. Um, we Good can morning. start from. Good morning, everybody. Do you hear me properly? I guess. Okay. Perfect. I hear you. Okay. So. Ah, y sorry, compartir. Okay, do you see my screen? Perfect, yes. thank you. <laughs> so, ECOFAC project uh, overview, okay. Well, I, I will start with the, um, with the formal, sorry, sorry, with the formal definition, okay. So, uh, ECOFAT stands for Eco Innovative Energy Factory Management System based on enhanced life cycle analysis and life cycle cost analysis towards resource efficient manufacturing. As you see, it's a very friendly name and quite easy to understand. No, just, just kidding. Okay, we will see it. Okay, it's, um, it's a fourth year, four years project and started uh, last October. Okay. Well, the, 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 the main idea is to optimize the energy performance of the product, of the production systems in line with the relevant uh, production constraints, okay, in, in a factory. While at the same time, uh, uh, we approach, let's say, um, the environmental signature and through the life cycle perspective, which uh, it's important, not, not, only, not only the energy, but also the, the the, the life cycle analysis. Okay, so uh, talking about uh, our consortium, our consortium is formed officially by 20. Indeed, it's 20 plus one because we have two Fraunhofer institutes. So, although on the papers we have 20 partners, on on practice we are 21, and uh, from seven different countries: like Germany, uh, Spain, Italy, Netherlands. Greece, Ireland, and Turkey, I think. I don't forget anyone. We are seven research centers, four big industries that uh, behave as four big demos, and 10 small and medium enterprises, okay? What's, what's the ECOFAT main objective? So our, our main objective is to develop and demonstrate up to TRL7 an eco-innovative energy factory management platform based on improved uh, dynamic LCA calculations or systems, okay? And the key word here is platform, okay? So don't, don't forget don't forget the, the, the platform word because it's the, it's the key. And this platform is a hardware and software combination, although it's more software than, than hardware. It's a focus on, on, let's say, a combination of uh, ICT's uh, technologies for advanced uh, data collection and processing. So, 
talking about platform, remember that was the key, the key, the key word. Uh, our platform is, uh, let's say, four by levels and components. Okay, and I will describe uh, both of them. More, more the components than the levels, but uh, both of them. So we have the levels that are the different, uh, let's say, horizontal levels of the architecture of the of, the, of any platform, not uh, our platform, any uh, software platform. Okay, and we have the components that uh, we aim to develop. Okay. So regarding the levels, we call it ECOFAT levels, although it's not specific for ECOFAT, let's say are basically the levels of any type of platform to be de developed on a factory ecosystem, okay? On, on the bottom level, we have the field level that connects products and infrastructure for field data monitoring. On top of that, we will have the edge control layer that uh, provides a uh, real data acquisition, okay? And on top of this, uh, two lower levels, we have the two higher levels where the ECOFAT platform is going to be developed. And these two higher levels are the data brokerage layer, which brings uh, site information and cloud data services, and the higher level, which is the application and service layer, where all the multi-services uh, and components are uh, deployed and uh, basically operate okay so components which is the 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 the, the main uh, let's say items to be developed in 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 our platform we have divided the the components of our platform in let, let's say in five branches okay the interoperability branch operations management branch energy aware manufacturing energy I'm sorry, environmental or environment aware manufacturing and overarching components. And we are going to we are going to explain uh, quickly each of these uh, different components that uh, let's say form the uh, the ECOFAT platform. So regarding the interoperability components, um, we have uh, what we call the smart data collection by smart sensors and industrial internet of things network so we have uh, we aim to develop uh, hardware boxes solutions to integrate different sensors and to be deployed on the factory fields and also the industrial internet of things uh, connection drivers to connect to the ECOFAT uh, higher levels of the platform these uh, hardware boxes okay also, we have uh, a component which is in charge of the data acquisition layer for the uh, edge interoperability that, uh, let's say, that homogenize uh, real data from the uh, possible industrial Internet of uh, Things network deployed at the factory fields. Focusing on, on, on the next uh, type of components, what we have, we have called operations management components, we have basically the industrial digital twin and the production planning algorithms. The first one, it's um, an evolving digital twin where um, real-time data processing, energy models, energy and material flow simulations will be integrated in order to have, let's say, a, a, a digital twin of the factory. Okay, And the second component is a algorithms, the development of algorithms for production scheduling strategies. So considering multiple options like real forecast data, product demand, resource availability, the, these algorithms uh, try, will try to um, optimize the, the possible planning of the factory. Obviously, in, in those factories where you have a possible different options in terms of machineries, lines, orders, things, you know, a complex, a complex organization of the manufacturing processes that allow different planning options. Then we jump into the energy aware manufacturing components and we have two components here, the industrial energy disaggregation, which is algorithms to, let's say, provide data analyze to unpack the total energy consumption that is only being measured by a single meter or a submitter into, uh, let's say, or being, or, well, it can be split in different components, different machines or different periods of time, different loads. That's, that's the idea, obviously. 
And the other energy aware manufacturing company is the industrial energy flexibility. So these basically algorithms to guarantee an stable and reliable energy supply of those factories that are equipped with their own generation access. Those factories that have their own cogeneration plant, their photovoltaic plant, they, their own whatever own generation asset, which is uh, thanks more and more often uh, every day. Every day there are more factories that are installing their own generation assets on, on the factory. And regarding the environmental aware manufacturing components, um, we have the, the dynamic LCA, LCCA uh, tool, which provide, which will provide with the near real-time uh, automatic calculations. And these automatic calculations in near real-time will be based on, on parameterized LCA models of the factories to be developed. And the supply change collaboration module, which is a software service where the suppliers of the demos can collaborate and uh, provide their uh, LCA information. So, their uh, environmental impact, the environmental impact of the suppliers is incorporated in the, into the total calculation of the LCA calculations of the fact of the end product of the factory demos. And finally, the, 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 the last branch of possible components that uh, group and form the ECOFAT uh, platform is what we call overarching components. And we have the holistic decision support system, which is a, um, an user interface and a dashboard, will be a user interface and a dashboard that will provide uh, management recommendations based on, on multi-criteria, including all the information provided by the previous components I just explained it. And because we are talking about a cloud platform, obviously uh, it's important to have a cybersecurity mechanism to, to make the system safe and reliable. So all the procedures like authentication, encryptation, and things like that will be taken into account in order to make the platform uh, secure from a cybersecurity perspective. So just to remember, uh, we have the ECOFAT uh, platform with the different components on top of the different levels. And at the lower level, we have the field, which is where our four demos uh, will be included. I'm not going to talk so much, well, indeed, I'm not going to talk almost anything about the demos because there is a specific presentation later about the demos. Uh, just to remember that the COFAT is a demonstration project. We aim to uh, test in our four demos and previously in our two pre-demos um, the, the platform developed in, in this project. And just to to, to sum up the, the ECOFAT concept in a more friendly slide, I would say that the idea is to collect production processes, knowledge, professional simulation tools, and energy resource planning, and to combine everything into a platform, but also a methodology for boosting efficiency, but not only efficiency in terms of energy, but also in terms of material resources at the factory, okay? Without forgetting the whole value chain, without forgetting the in this case, the supply chain, okay? What are our expected impacts? Our expected impacts are uh, energy consumption reduction for the improved production processes of at least 25%, a life cycle cost reduction of at least 15%, improved environmental performance of the involved products and the development of a standardized European energy efficient best practices to overcome the barriers, limiting their applications in the manufacturing sectors. And finally, I want I, I always like to include when I have time, and this is the case, what I call what I personally call the ECOFAT message. And indeed, I should not call it the ECOFAT message, I should call it the Lord Kelvin message, but 
It's a sentence I like to remember. It has got more than 100 years, but I think it's quite quite valuable. Let's see. Kelvin said, what is not defined cannot be measured, what is not measured cannot be improved, and what is not improved is always degraded. And the idea here is more or less related with that uh, simple concept of Lord Kelvin. Our idea is to develop new innovative ways to firstly define, secondly measure, and thirdly improve the energy efficiency and the environmental impact of complex model manufacturing processes, of complex uh, manufacturing facilities, not simple process with one simple line and one simple machine. We're talking about uh, industrial facilities with plenty of uh, production lines, plenty of machineries, plenty of uh, different uh, contributors to the uh, energy and environmental consumption of the factories. And that's all from, from my side. This is the, the ECOFAT fact sheet, que llamamos, fact, fact sheet, que llamamos, that we call, sorry, that it's basically a source, uh, send a swarm up of the project and our contact through the web page and social media of the, of the project. And that's all from my side. I think I've been on time. Thank you, Francisco. Perfect in time. Uh, so we are going to hear from you in a few minutes since uh, you're going to update us also uh, about the first year results overview. Uh, but for the moment, I would like to leave the floor now to Dimitris Kurkumpas from CERT that is going to uh, show you which are the demo sites involved in our, in our project. So please, Dimitris, the floor is yours. Thank you. Thank you, Iris. I hope that uh, you can see my screen. We can. Okay, perfect. Uh, good morning, everyone. Thank you for attending this uh, webinar. Uh, this is Dimitris Kurkubas from uh, CERT, uh, the Research Institute in Greece, that uh, is leading uh, the work back as uh, uh, relevant to the uh, demo activities in the ECOFAC project. Uh, as uh, Francisco mentioned before, uh, we have uh, four main demos from different uh, sectors. Uh, you can see, uh, uh, sorry. Mm. Can you see my screen? Yes, yes we can. Okay, perfect. Uh, so, uh, here you can see uh, the four demos. Uh, uh, the first one is uh, the Archelic. Archelic uh, is uh, uh, from the sector of uh, uh, household uh, durables, white goods. And uh, in uh, Ecofact, uh, we investigate uh, the subsector regarding uh, uh, washing machines. Uh, the second one is uh, the Athena Brewery from Greece from the sector beverage and uh, we investigate in the um, ECOFAC project the brewing uh, production process. Uh, the Goulon, uh, the third one is from Spain, it's uh, from the uh, food under the food sector and uh, we investigate in the ECOFAC project uh, uh, the subsector regarding biscuits and cereal based products. Okay, and uh, for uh, in Tofas, it's uh, under the automotive uh, sector and uh, in ECOFAC we investigate ENSO. So, Let's see the demos. Uh, first one, uh, the Archelic. Uh, Archelic, uh, it's uh, established in 1955 in Istanbul, 66 years of uh, history. It's uh, the fourth biggest uh, one uh, company for what good companies uh, in uh, Europe in total sales. And uh, they have uh, uh, facilities at uh, eight countries with uh, 22 production facilities and more than 30. Uh, thousand employees worldwide, while the annual production volume is more than 20 million units. So, for uh, the Aquafact uh, project, uh, we are uh, working uh, uh, for uh, the factory uh, in uh, Romania, uh, located in Romania. Uh, you can see here that uh, the total area is more than 17,000 meters, while the production capacity is uh, more than 1 million uh, products per year. There are three main uh, lines, production lines, uh, the uh, mechanical uh, production line, the 
plastic production line and the assembly lines in the Edcofact project. We investigate the mechanical production line. You to uh, this one is uh, the most uh, intensive uh, uh, stage due to uh, cabinet uh, uh, manufacturing. Uh, the main demo activities that we are going to do in uh, uh, this uh, 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 in this uh, project uh, it's uh, that uh, we will uh, get the uh, data from uh, uh, regarding energy and uh, environmental data from the utilities and uh, then uh, to provide some indicators this one is uh, uh, the relevant indicators for monitoring we will support the dynamic uh, LCA and uh, life cycle costing analysis in order to develop a more efficient and sustainable operations across the value chain. We support smart monitoring in order to enhance the existing energy monitoring network in the facility, in the facility, in the factory. Uh, while uh, we will contribute to the development of digital twins with a dual aim of reducing base loads and optimizing centralized generation assets and energy service. The second one is the Athena Brewery from Athens in Greece. Uh, it's uh, under the group of uh, Heineken, uh, where in the production for uh, the whole group it's more than 2 million hectoliters per day of beer. Uh, in uh, Greece, uh, the Athena Brewery uh, has uh, uh, 57 years uh, present and uh, we target mainly uh, to the we target in the uh, we are working in the factory in Thessaloniki in North Greece and so the, there is uh, uh, the pilot the demo uh, for uh, Ecofact project uh, you can see here um, the main process for uh, brewing uh, starting from uh, barley uh, from uh, malt, malt production brewing fermentation filtering and finally the packaging and uh, storage uh, so we uh, working in this uh, process uh, in the Ecofact project. You can see here that the factory has a capacity, production capacity, uh, more than uh, 150,000 hectoliters uh, per year. The main resources is electricity, natural gas, and water, and uh, an existing um, uh, network of meters measuring uh, every process steps uh, in terms of energy consumption electricity uh, and uh, gas. Uh, you can see here a brief description about the demo actions in the Athena Brewery. Uh, again here we are um, uh, working on uh, mass and energy balances in order to uh, first of all to have a clear picture about uh, uh, the, uh, the factory, the operation of the factory and then based on this uh, data and uh, the Ecofact platform that we will uh, install, we will um, proceed uh, to activities uh, for Ecofact uh, project, as for example, digital to in energy cost optimization and the uh, dynamic LCA and LCC um, uh, analysis for optimizing water and energy utilities and emissions. Just to mention that uh, we have also uh, here uh, a local uh, uh, platform uh, art, called the Artemis, but uh, uh, based on this one, uh, we will um, uh, gather data in order uh, later on uh, to uh, uh, optimize the process and uh, to forecasting uh, some energy uh, demand. So, uh, the third one is Goulon. Uh, Goulon is uh, in Spain, established in 1892. Uh, it's uh, among uh, the, the top uh, Spanish biscuits uh, company. Uh, there are uh, two factories in Valencia, and uh, the newest factory is Goulon uh, Vita uh, for uh, production of uh, cereal based uh, products. And uh, as you can see, uh, the total capacity uh, and the upgrading and product storage building is more than. Uh, uh, 57,000 uh, 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 pallets. Uh, you can see here um, uh, the overview of uh, this uh, Vita factory. 
uh, there are two production lines, rice and uh, corn cakes and uh, soft baked uh, cereal bars line. The production capacity is uh, 18,000 uh, 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 tons, while the annual consumption is uh, 20,000 megawatt hours of electricity and 60,000 uh, approximately uh, megawatt hours for natural gas. Uh, on the second, on uh, the right, you can see uh, the process uh, that uh, starting from uh, cereal uh, with making all the other processing and the reaching to the packaging and the final storage. Uh, the demo actions, it's uh, to characterize and, and analyze energy demand and production profiles of the data factory based on energy segregation algorithms with the aim of optimization of central generation asset management to support in the, the dynamic uh, LCA and the uh, life cycle costing analysis uh, with the aim of efficient decision making and process product design. While in this uh, also demo, we consider uh, the supply and chain collaboration component in order to optimize uh, uh, the, uh, the processes uh, relevant to the collaboration with the main feedstock uh, suppliers. Finally, we have the TOFAS. It was uh, established in uh, 1968 in Turkey. It's the fourth uh, biggest industrial uh, uh, establishment and uh, manufacturing in, uh, in Turkey. Uh, uh, covers 20% uh, of uh, the Turkish automotive industry production, and uh, the total area is uh, 1 million uh, uh, square meters. Uh, more than uh, 700,000 uh, employees working in uh, uh, the facility, in the factory. In the project, uh, we targeting uh, in the TOFAS pen shop located in Bursa, Turkey. Uh, the pen shop is responsible mainly for uh, 48 uh, of the total energy consumption of the total units. Uh, the annual production is uh, more than uh, uh, 450,000 units and uh, you can see in the picture uh, the main, uh, let's say, process stages uh, starting from the eco lines uh, ceiling and the PVC primer line, the top coat uh, lines, and finally the finishing for body controls done by operators. Uh, for uh, the demo actions, uh, here we will uh, uh, gather data for uh, energy data from uh, the Tofas paint shop in order to carry out the process optimization and control energy performance activities. Will contribute to the best benefit cost analysis for upgrading current monitoring uh, while we are using also energy segregation uh, algorithms in order to identify and prevent losses by comparison of the current situation with the most efficient predicted scenarios and operational points while also we will integrate all of these algorithms in a digital twin. Uh, finally, as uh, we did, uh, we will do in the other uh, demos we will develop dynamic LC and uh, life cycle costing modeling uh, by online tracking of carbon emissions and information from other stages of the car production chain. Uh, last uh, slide about uh, the summary. As uh, Francisco mentioned before, EcoFact uh, uh, project uh, provides uh, uh, a wide range of components and functionalities in order to install in the demos and operate. So we'll have uh, more than one year operation of uh, EcoFact platform in uh, uh, this uh, demo, uh, in these demos. And as you can see, uh, we have a wide range starting, uh, let's say, with equipment, including equipment as uh, smart sensors or models, uh, for example, industrial digital twin, production planning and cost optimization, uh, energy disaggregation, uh, and its flexibility in the asset management, dynamic LCA, life cycle costing, supply chain collaboration, and finally, a holistic uh, decision support system uh, for all demos. Thank you very much for your uh, uh, attention. And, uh, Thank you, Dimitris. Uh, this is all from my side. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Dimitris, for your presentation. Now, as I mentioned before, we move back to Francisco for the first year results overview uh, in order to, to make you all updates about uh, our results. Okay. 
Thank you, Edis. Let's see if I'm able again to share my screen. Yeah, while you're uh, sharing your screen, I would like just to mention that if anyone has any kind of question, please use the tool on your uh, GoToWebinar uh, screen to, to add questions that we will uh, answer at the end of this, uh, of this event. Please, Francisco, the floor is yours. Okay, do you see my screen? Yes. Okay. Perfect. So. Okay. But yeah, results overview. Okay. So, just as I mentioned before, remember we have um, 10 components divided in, let's say, five types or five branches. Okay. Remember these components and the different um, layers of the platform are grouped together to form the architecture of the platform to be developed. So these different components are associated, let's say, to different work packages. I'm not going to enter so much into detail to talk about the different work packages and tasks. It's, it's not. It's not the scope of this presentation, but just let's con let's remember that we have different components, and we ha we will have different activities or work packages. Okay, and some of them specifically related with different components, others related with the let's say adding all together the different components into the final platform, and obviously we have a, an initial reference uh, activity. So. If we move to the ECOFAC time implementation, we are a four-year project. We are about to end the first year of the project. So our first activity, the first one that I started and is about to end, would be the activity related with the construction or the definition of the reference framework and methodology. After that, we also have different activities one related with the development of the interoperability components, one related with the energy and operations components development, another activity related with the environmental components development. Then we will have, let's say, the develop of the ECOFAC platform, where all the previous components are grouped together with the overarching components that we saw on the previous presentation which will be the you know the, the building of the um, of the whole um, platform and delayed to that um, building but uh, also in parallel let's say we will have the demonstration activities firstly with the pre-demos and finally with the demos until the end of the project. And that, that would be, let's say, the technical activities. Of course, besides the technical activities, we have horizontal activities as any other um, H2020 project. We will have an standardization, certification, and regulation activity. We have a replication and exploitation activity that has not started or work package and we have during the whole life of the project dissemination and communication activities okay so regarding the first year results in terms of the reference framework and methodology we have made an, an study of the manufacturing processes with higher potential for energy optimization we have performed the identification of the most impactful and most energy demand processes within the manufacturing places of uh, plants of, of our demos. We have um, elaborated the description of the current baseline of our demos. And this uh, current baseline has, has got to be implemented somehow through different alternative, um, let's say, strategies. For instance, we have internal workshops to show the different aspects of the facilities. As, as you know, in, during this, this last year, we have plenty of travel restrictions and uh, physical visits to the factory has not been possible. Also re related with this uh, 
reference framework and methodology activity. We have made the collection of the demos challenge and expectations. And we have defin def finalized the definition of the high level, not the specific high level features of the ECOFAC platform according to the demos challenge and expectations. And we are finishing the general revision of the KPIs used in the uh, demo sectors. Okay. Regarding the interoperability components, the first uh, type of components of the platform, we have finished the requirements of the demo sites for developing the edge layer. We have analyzed the existing communication systems and architectures at the demo sites. We have uh, uh, finalizing or finalizing the the edge architecture with the integration of uh, Schneider Electric, Wins, and Smartia platforms. These uh, three companies are members of the consortium and they have their own edge architecture used uh, in, in other industrial facilities. And obviously, we are not going to reinvent, reinvent the wheel. We are taking advantage of the knowledge of, of all our uh, partners and we are integrating these existing platforms into the ECOFA plan. And we have uh, finished the requirement analysis of sensor box, the smart sensor box that will be tested at the Arcelic demo. Okay. Regarding the energy and operations components, uh, the, the main result here is that uh, the architecture of the ECOFAT digital twin platform has been designed. I'm, I'm talking about the architecture, not the digital twin itself. And this architecture. Uh, will include the high-level components specifications and the functional manual descriptions. Regarding the environmental components and development, uh, we have uh, started the preparation for the modeling, the setup of the projects on, on CIMA Pro. Also re related with CIMA Pro, um, Training provided has been provided for partners for in the CIMA Pro online platform. Uh, remember, one of the partners of this consortium is Pre, which is the company that uh, developed a CIMA Pro tool. Okay, the the CIMA Pro on LCA tool, and also the data collection for the baseline environmental impact is is currently ongoing. Okay. Regarding the global platform, the final platform development, uh, we, what has been designed is the, the architecture of the global uh, ECOFAT platform. This, uh, global, this architecture has been, has been designed following the, the, the ISO standards regarding which software development. And in this, uh, this architecture design, it has been included the needed components, the flow of data among the different components, and how these components will be deployed during the test in the demo sites. And finally, regarding the standardization, certification, and regulations, we have performed an analysis of the current practices. I'm not going to talk so much about this because there is a specific presentation for this. And regarding dissemination and communication, uh, the typical activities related with that, uh, the website was launched, uh, the, the LinkedIn and Twitter social media accounts were also launched, and we have uh, sent our first new letter at the month six, and in the next weeks, uh, we will launch our uh, second newsletter. We, we intend to send a newsletter every six months. In April, we have our first project webinar, and right now we are having our second project webinar. Okay, and, and that's all from my from my side. Uh, just to finish with the slide, I usually like to I usually like to finish. Thank you, thank you, Francisco. Uh, we can now move on to the next presentation that is, uh, as Francisco mentioned, uh, a focus on the regulation and standards activities and framework we uh, identified during the project. So I would like to leave the floor to Federica Rosasco from, from RINA. Please, Federica, the floor is yours. 
Thank you, Iris, and uh, good morning, everyone. I am uh, part of uh, Environmental and Climate Change Unit of RINA Consulting, and we analyzed uh, the regulatory standard and certification uh, landscape for uh, manufacturing industries uh, inside the Ecofact project. So we start with the, the analysis of the um, current regulatory framework and the main instrumentary instruments uh, that, that can be applied in, uh, in the field of energy efficiency and life cycle sustainability for this kind of industries. We started with the desk research based on the literary uh, review just to have an overview of the current uh, EU uh, scenario. Then uh, we um, proposed what we found to the for uh, demo site of the project, just for them to check uh, if uh, they were aligned with the um, with the framework uh, and if uh, they comply uh, also with the other uh, regulation uh, or uh, if they found uh, some non-technical uh, barriers or uh, some obstacles in uh, complying uh, with uh, with some of them. And finally, we analyzed what we collected and a summary is presented here where we can find, uh, first of all, the energy efficiency directive that uh, sets uh, both at EU level, but also at the national level, some targets uh, to, to increase the energy efficiency in the processes uh, to, by 2020 or 2030. But uh, it also aims to uh, remove uh, some uh, barriers in the energy market uh, and to overcome uh, market failures that can uh, um, go against uh, efficiency in the supply or use of energy. Uh, then the Renewable Energy Directive uh, sets uh, um, some uh, union target uh, of at least 32% by 2030 uh, for the overall share of um, energy from uh, renewable sources. Uh, and it also described uh, some financial support uh, system for um, electricity from renewables uh, or uh, the self-consumption of uh, this kind of um, electricity, but also administrative procedures and uh, information for, uh, for training. Then we can see the Ecofact Eco Design Directive is a framework directive, so it doesn't set a specific standard, but provide a framework in terms of criteria and procedures to be followed to put in force real implementing measures. So it divides the product in energy using product and other energy related products. So products that uh, do not use uh, directly energy for their uh, functionalities, but uh, have a significant uh, impact uh, on uh, energy consumption. So also in terms of uh, savings. And then uh, it uh, sets uh, requirements uh, specific and general. So um, putting uh, a, a, threshold, a threshold limit values uh, like the maximum energy consumption or the minimum uh, use of recycled materials or just in terms of uh, um, information requirement that the products are energy efficient or recyclable. Uh, then the energy labeling directive um, reintroduce uh, the original scale from uh, A to G for a future uh, label of uh, 15 uh, product group groups, uh, introduce uh, a, a common uh, database to, to support the market uh, surveillance, the European product database for energy labeling, and it sets uh, out also general obligation for, uh, for suppliers uh, of, the, of the product and procedure for um, national control of, uh, of the product that can uh, present uh, risks. Uh, finally, the eco-label regulation is a voluntary uh, environmental labeling schemes and uh, it can be applied to any goods and services uh, supplied for both uh, distribution, consumption or, uh, or use uh, in, the, um, in the community market. Uh, here there are some specific uh, um, regulations, uh, for example, the emission trading uh, systems uh, is the um, EU system managing the, the world's first major carbon market uh, and is a declaration that has uh, to be mandatory for some specific sector companies uh, like uh, oil and gas, but also power and uh, heat generation uh, or um, energy intensive industry sectors. Uh, but also for uh, um, plants with the st stationary combustion, which uh, uh, input capacity aggregated uh, is uh, more than 20 
megawatt uh, thermic. Uh, then the IPCC uh, directive uh, put, uh, put the goal to achieve uh, an integrated pollution prevention and, uh, and control from uh, some uh, large industrial installation uh, based on the application of the best practice uh, in, the, in the sector. And finally, the pressure equipment directive, um, it uh, uh, sets out some standard for the design and uh, the manufacture of uh, pressure equipment, uh, but also administrative procedures requirement for the uh, conformity assessment of uh, this um, equipment. Uh, it is uh, mandatory within uh, Europe and uh, for the for all the components that will be uh, sent to, to the Europe market. Uh, the implementation of this directive is supported by, by a set of uh, guidelines that can uh, help to, to ensure that the, the directive is uh, applied in a, in a correct way. So uh, this is uh, the, the result uh, of the four questionnaires that we sent uh, to the four demos of um, Ecofact. Uh, in, they applied in different um, factories. So we, we saw that uh, more or less uh, all the EU mentioned the regulatory instruments were uh, well known. Uh, some of them were not applicable in the specific uh, factory like the ATS system for uh, Arcelic washing machine factory and the Gurdon food factory. Factory uh, and uh, the eco design and uh, the energy labeling directive results not to be uh, applicable for uh, food and beverage uh, product. And this is uh, uh, it was noticed like uh, also a, a barrier in uh, complying with the regulatory instruments uh, um, in particular uh, uh, factories like food and beverage uh, ones, uh, as well as. Uh, a different level of application of the regulatory instruments, uh, especially for the wet good products uh, between uh, member states uh, and the relative uh, requirement, uh, additional requirements needed, or also the environmental product declaration in, uh, in automotive uh, was not, uh, is not now, uh, can be applicable for uh, uh, the whole product, but for just for the some uh, components like uh, seeds or uh, some uh, part uh, internal of uh, plastics. So this is uh, just a summary of the um, single compliance uh, uh, of the directive for, uh, for the partners. Uh, and uh, um, as a next step for the regulatory framework, we will uh, working, uh, um, keep working on this, uh, in particular to identify the policy instruments that can uh, promote energy efficiency um, in the manufacturing uh, management. Apart from uh, regulatory landscape, we also analyze the uh, standardization framework. So uh, with the different methodology, we prepared uh, a list of keywords that are the one in the right part of the screen. Um, and then we shared uh, this, uh, this list with the COFACT partner for their uh, review and validation uh, in order to find uh, a uh, filtered list of a potential relevant standard, uh, including the already published one, but also the one under development that can then be uh, certified uh, for the manufacturing industries. This uh, is uh, the, the result, so a characterization of uh, different standardization documents, so all the numbers and the part that can be um, part of uh, a uh, standard, uh, European, international or also national, and uh, a list of relevant standards for uh, um, ECOFACT, so for the manufacturing um, industry uh, divided in uh, five groups, uh, the ICT technologies, uh, energy and environmental, uh, automation, uh, life cycle, and uh, quality assurance and safety uh, management. Uh, finally, uh, we investigated the certification schemes that uh, can be applied to the mentioned standard in order to be certified. We um, use the double consultation process between the partner of um, Ecofact Consortium, but also we contacted the, the um, IQNet Association, that is an uh, international certification network. So we uh, divided the, the certification schemes in uh, eight uh, groups and topics, the one on the right, and we identified the related uh, standards uh, and the certification process 
um, for the uh, standard that can already be certified, but also the standard that can support the interpretation and the development of the um, standard that can be certified, and also some technical criteria that are not uh, standard yet, but can be in future. So this is the results uh, for each one of the eight group. We reported the support standard and the available standard to, to be certificated. And uh, in the deliverable, in the final report, we also described for each one of these uh, um, standard and certification schemes, the uh, terminology and definition that uh, are mostly used, the principle or procedures or the, the requirement and the guideline for the quantification of the of the product and that's all from my side thank you thank you federica uh, thank you for your presentation so we have uh, one last presentation for you uh, that will be uh, shown by uh, mark from imr uh, i would like to say again that uh, we are sharing actually a lot of information for the moment uh, so if you have any question any specific question please write it down on the on the question tool on the on go to webinar and we are going to answer them uh, at the end of this uh, at this event uh, but uh, for the moment, Mark, please, the floor is yours. Cyrus. Um, so, hey, everybody. Um, I'm Mark from Irish Manufacturing Research. Um, and as I said, I'm the last presentation of today. So um, hopefully I won't keep you too long. Um, so I'm here to talk about the future activities of Ecofact, um, mainly focused on the communication and dissemination side of things. Um, and as you can see from the previous presentations and um, it's it's a really exciting time for the the project there's a lot of there's a lot happening a lot of progress and um, and i'm just here to bring you through um how best to follow up on our activity over the, the coming weeks and months um, so for those who are maybe new to the project um, or it's your first first time engaging with us um, we have a, a couple of communication channels that we use um, so we have our website we have our social media channels um, we have our events and we also have a newsletter um, and I'll just take you through uh, each of each of those in a bit more detail now. Um, so first looking at website content um, yeah I, for, for those look, watching in um, the best place to find out about Ecofact is on our website um, all our information is stored there and all our contact and all our updates and on activity so um, that would be my first uh, first part of protocol for you to to visit our website to find out more about us um, and I suppose over the coming weeks and, and, and months um, we'll be publishing more of our deliverables and reports once they're signed off by the, the, the EC um, so that's really how you'll find out the, the interesting uh, things that we're doing and, and the progress that we're making so um, yeah that's the, the first um, the first protocol I would say for, for you to do um, and then follow from this um, on the website apart from deliverables there's, we, we have all uh, different types of content so um, we have you would have a new section that would look at um, promoting events such as today and um, also some of the events that we have coming up and um, we also have information on our, on our partners um, on the demo sites um, and also you would have, um, as Francisco mentioned earlier, um, information on the concept of the project and some of our objectives and goals. Um, so, as well as that, we would have the, our previous newsletters. Um, so that, that would be a quick way to get a quick overview of, of what we've done over recent months. Um, and there's another one due in the coming weeks. Um, we also have a download section. Um, so here we will have uh, our fact sheet which is a, a quick summary of the project. And we will also have some um, infographics that we, we've created over the, la the last few months. And um, so that's, that's another section of the, of the news page on, on, on the website. Um, we also have our videos. Um, so um, as Francisco already mentioned, we've we done a, a webinar back in April. Um, and if you want to go have a look back at that, um, it's available now on our website. And for those um, attending today, we will also have the Today's webinar um, will feature on the website in the coming days. So if there's anything you missed out on or anything you need to review, um, that will be uploaded in the coming days. Um, and also, 
with that as well we would have links to our, our social media and we have a live feed of what's happening on, on our twitter page so um that's that's our, our website and then um something something else that's coming up is um our, our training plan um so um that's part of that's a deliverable that's been worked on at the moment and I suppose what we're trying to do is provide knowledge uh, about the concepts and benefits of Ecofact. Um, there'll be some case studies and um, there'll be the latest insight on the energy efficiency and energy management uh, sector. Um, so obviously the team working on, working on this project will, will have the, the latest knowledge. So that will that will be something uh, we, we would like to share. And also we look at the importance of life cycle analysis analysis and life cycle cost assessment in the manufacturing industry so uh, again this this will be shared on the website in the coming coming weeks and months so um, definitely something we're keeping an eye, an eye out when, when you visit our, our site um, so uh, as, as Francisco already mentioned we have our, our social media channels uh, Twitter and, and LinkedIn so um, I would advise um, if, if you're new to the project that you, you do um, follow our, our channels um, as this is a um, as this is a mirror really of, of what happens on our website so any art, new articles or updates we will share on our website we will also share on social media for you to to, to, to see so um yeah hopefully after today our, our subscribers numbers will will uh will be increased um and that's what we're, we're hoping to do so um yeah please do visit our, our social media channels and engage with us if, if you can um, and then looking at our events um, that are coming up over the, the coming weeks and, and months. So it's um, yeah, it, it's really like a really busy period um, for for Ecofact um, in terms of events. Um, in between now and the end of the calendar year, we we're actually involved in quite a lot. So we obviously have today's webinar, um, and in tomorrow uh, tomorrow evening um, there's a Macaro night, which has been organised by La Palma Research. This event will it, it's what basically what they're trying to do is spread the good word of horizon 2020 and the, and the projects that um, are, are under that uh, initiative um, and communicate this to those in the outer regions of uh, europe so looking at the canary islands um places like this so it's a it's a digital event and um something i i, I would recommend that people have a look at so and you can see there the the website um, link is macronight.eu so um that would be that's definitely worth it worth a look tomorrow um, and also we have the sustainable places conference next week um taking place in italy and um, i'll go through that further in a moment and um, we, we we have some uh, some further insight to that um, at the end of october then is sustainable energy week um, again we will hope to um, be involved in this initiative in some way more than likely digitally and um, through another webinar um, but it's a really important initiative organised by the European Commission. So again, I, I would um, keep an eye on our social media feeds um, to see what we're doing, and also to look um, at the, the Sustainable Energy Week website and social media channels to see the different activity that is this happening. Um, so that's in the last week of last week of October. And finally, um, we will also have a presence at the Lit Europe event, which is taking place in uh, December. Um, again, I, 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 we will be our presence will be digital for this year and um, just with restrictions and everything but um you'll still be able to to, to find us on the, the the conference website and find the information for us there so um um as always just, just keep an eye on our social media channels and, and you'll see what kind of presence we will have and what our activity will be um so yeah just to speak a bit more about sustainable places um 2021 um so we're a part of a workshop with um Three other FOF projects, uh, Denim, Enerman, and E2 Commotion. Commotion. Um, and this is taking place uh, next week. So, um, for for the for the viewer, I suppose, and um, we have some good news that normally to attend the Sustainable Places workshop um, for a day, there's a cost, and um, it's it's fifty euro. And um, but the project leaders have come together um, and have decided. We will financially cover um, the fee uh, for those who want to attend the event, so it, it, it's free. Um, so if, if you look at our social media channels, um, you'll find information on this. Or if you want, you can obviously leave some your information. Um, 
you, you'll have our, our contact information from this and, and contact me directly and I can um, I can tell you how to, to register for the, the free event so um, that is that that should be a, a very interesting workshop and um, looking at energy efficient manufacturing so um, a, a really interesting one and Francisco will be presenting at that so um, I would highly recommend um, that you tune in and then finally just looking at our, our newsletter um, so it's as Francisco said it's it's a product newsletter so we had it um, after one six and now it will be due again in the coming weeks so it, it's a quick summary of what's been happening over that specific period of time um, and for if, if you're not already subscribed um, the best thing to do is to visit the Ecofact website um, and on the top right hand corner you'll see a button like this the subscribe button with the little letter um, on it so um, once you click on that, you will be able to enter your details, and from then on, you'll be added to our email list, and you'll receive the content. So, um, um, I would advise again to do that. Hopefully, our subscribers numbers will will build, uh, will be increased from from today. So, um, for me, that that's it, and thanks for listening. And here are our links um, to follow us or contact us. So, uh, thanks. So, Iris, I'll hand it back over to you. Thank you, thank you, Mark. Thank you all for uh, your presentations. So we shared a lot of information. Again, um, if you have any questions, please let us know. Otherwise, we will share after this event an email, a recap email with all the information and the presentation that we shared today with you. And uh, if you have any doubt, you can reach us uh, because we will share again also our contacts. Uh, but uh, now we would like to ask for your contribution. We would like to um, share with you some uh, some polls uh, in order to get your point of view also uh, about uh, the information we shared today. So maybe we can start for uh, from the from the first poll. Uh, this is um, just to uh, get to know better the attendees from this uh, uh, from this event. So I'm going to launch it. Uh, we are asking you to uh, tell us uh, which type of organization do you belong to. Uh, we expect to see a lot of uh, manufacturing uh, sector, uh, ma mainly academia and R&D um, centers. Uh, we, um, we added also your public authority or technology provider uh, and others, of course, if you are not part of the previous mentioned uh, categories. So please let us know uh, this, this information to really uh, understand um the, the partners here involved uh for this uh for, for this event uh i'm seeing uh, different uh votes maybe i can uh leave some seconds uh and i will share the the results but i see that pretty much everyone voted uh so maybe yeah i can close and share this with you so I can see uh, a lot of uh, participants from the academia and R&D uh, centers. Um, well, I can see also uh, an even distribution between manufacturing sector and technology providers and a lot of others. So uh, of course, we are also interested in uh, know uh, which kind of uh, organization do you belong to if you would like to uh, write it down on the on the chat or if you would like to share this information with us uh, afterwards with the uh, with the, uh, the final email we are going to to share with you uh, we can move on to the next um, poll uh, through this poll, we would like to know uh, if the regulation and standards we identified uh, and we shared with you today are also in line with your manufacturing industry uh, of course we saw a lot of uh, people from other organizations so uh, feel free to answer i do not know if you uh, are not part of the of the manufacturing sector uh, otherwise please let us know if uh, they are in line uh, you are in line with this uh, this information or uh, you think that we should focus on something else more um, compared to to those uh, this is really interesting because, uh, as you have seen also from Francisco's presentation, we are going to focus on the regulatory and standardization aspects uh, for for the entire life of the of the project. Uh, so, 
I would leave uh, some few seconds more, uh, but I see that almost all of you voted. Um, okay, I can share the results. So again, uh, I imagine that uh, a lot of you are not part of the manufacturing sector, so you are not, uh, of course, considering this, uh, this is a question, so a, a lot of I do not know, uh, but I'm glad to see that uh, there are uh, still a lot of answers on on the yes side, uh, so uh, we are uh, in line uh, with we we can say with the the regulation uh, the regulation framework, and this is uh, good good to know. Um, we can move on to the to the next one. Uh, so we presented today uh, different um, information about the next steps. Uh, of, of the project. So what we would like to know now is uh, which are your expectations uh, for the project next steps and how you would like to interact with us. So you expect to receive reports uh, on project results. You uh, imagine to participate maybe in future technical activities. This is something uh, that uh, can be of course done because we have also uh, some activities in which we would like to involve also external, um, let's say, partners, external contacts, uh, you would like to participate in future events and uh, or follow us on uh, on social media. Uh, so please let us know uh, what you expect, let's say, from, from, from our project and which kind of interaction you would like to, um, to, to have with us. Uh, so I saw that almost all of you voted. Uh, I can leave you some seconds more and I can close the poll and share with you the results. Uh, okay, we have different answers here. So uh, I can see receive reports on project results, the 38% of you. Um, of course, these uh, will be uploaded uh, on our website. Uh, so you will for sure receive um, this kind of information, if you uh, would like to 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 reach us uh, through this social this uh, this channel, um, I can see 31%. Uh, you would like to participate in future technical activities. This is uh, great to hear. As I mentioned before, we uh, we will contact you uh, to uh, to involve you maybe in uh, in some of these. 23% uh, participate in future events. Uh, that's great also to, to hear and 8% to follow social media activities. Uh, we can conclude maybe with the final poll before uh, moving on to the, um, to the question. Um, so have you engaged with the Ecofact communication activities? If so, how? So we would like to know if you have already visited our website if you follow us on Twitter or uh, LinkedIn, uh, if you had the chance to subscribe to our newsletter or none of the of the above. Uh, today we shared with you this, uh, this information, how to reach us. Uh, so we would like to interact more with you. So if uh, you selected this last option, uh, we uh, really would like to, to see you there uh, now that you know how to, to reach us. Uh, so I will leave uh, some extra seconds for you to, to answer, but I see that more or less the uh, percentages are stabilized, so I can share the results. Uh, so 33% of you uh, visited already our website, which is uh, great to know. 7% um, follow us on Twitter, while the 27% on LinkedIn. That is, uh, for the moment, I think the most used um, social media for this kind of activities. Um, none, of that, none of you uh, subscribed already to our newsletter. From uh, now on, you have, uh, let's say, all the information to get involved also through this uh, this channel, and uh, none of the of the above 33%. Uh, so I imagine uh, these 33% are also uh, now informed uh, about the the way to reach us, and we really hope to see you uh, from now on. So uh, we concluded here uh, the polls. Uh, 
uh, I would like to ask to the, uh, the speakers to turn on their camera uh, if uh, we have any uh, any question. Uh, I'm going to okay to see if there is any particular question from the from the audience. Just one second. Okay. Well, someone uh, answered to, to the previous question from the polls. So uh, we would like to know w which kind of uh, organization do you belong? And uh, uh, someone uh, answered a system technique revolved in, in Istanbul, Turkey. So thank you for, for letting us know. I do not see any other question for the moment. As I mentioned before, uh, you will receive a, a recap email. Uh, so if you will have any kind of doubt in the future, you can uh, you can you, you will be able to to reach us. Um, so yeah, I do not see any kind of uh, any kind of question for the moment. Um, so yeah, uh, I do not know if anyone would like to add something. I can say from my side uh, that I'm glad uh, to see um, the attendees today, and uh, uh, we uh, thank you for for your attention. We thank you for uh, for being here today today with us. Uh, we will share with you the presentation and all the main information um, that we shown today to you. I would like also to thank the speakers today. So Francisco, the, the coordinator, Mark, Dimitris, and Federica for sharing all the information. And uh, we really hope to see you on our social media, on our channels, and to interact more with you. Uh, we will also uh, update you about future activities in which we can uh, involve, uh, involve you. And that's, I think, it from, from my side. So thank you, thank you all. Thank you very much. Yeah, thanks everyone. Thank you, Thank you very much for your, you. uh, you. your organisation and all the attendees, of course. Great. So I wish you a nice day and uh, hope to see you soon, maybe in person next time. <laughs> Let's hope one 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 month of this we 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 finally be able to to see each other in person because it's it's a strange uh, one year of project and no you know no 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 one no type of face to face meeting but it's you know it's it's, it's what, what it happens is. now now and that's yeah. it okay thank you again then and uh, have a nice day okay bye 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 bye, bye, -bye. bye, -bye. bye, -bye.